Hi guys, Al here. Welcome back. So I did decide to uh, go ahead and sort of skip a or skip doing a review of the the Terror of Illuminati uh, for now. There's so much information on this deck out there. I'm sure you guys will agree. There's lots of websites, reviews, videos, um, and there's lots of other stuff I want to get to today. And I was really, really excited to do this comparison, this little side by side between the Terror of Illuminati and the brand new Terror Apocalypsis. Um, I just did an unboxing. I will put a link to that video. Video down below. Also, they're all pretty much like the same size and everything, but if you do want to see like a size comparison and a thickness comparison, um, head to the end of the, the Terror Apocalypse's unboxing video. Um, I mess around with that stuff a little bit at the end. And I also did decide to throw in, uh, this is the commemorative edition of the Rider Waite Smith, but I wanted to throw in uh, a Rider Waite Smith deck uh, for f a few different reasons, really. Um, one of the things I noticed about the Terror Apocalypses was how, I mean, I feel like it's still in the Rider Waite Smith wheelhouse, but it's not like uber Rider Waite Smith. Um, and I know for some people that might make things difficult. For some people that might be exactly what they're looking for. Um, but it, it really made it stand out for me uh, as opposed to like the Terra Illuminati, which was like it just you could even almost call it a clone of the of the Rider Waite Smith. Like, like all the figures uh, in the Terra Illuminati are doing like exactly the same thing that they're doing in the Rider Waite Smith deck. Uh, and you don't necessarily find that in the Terra Apocalypsis. So I thought I'd throw that deck in there so we can sort of compare um, how non-traditional sort of uh, the Terra Apocalypsis is. Uh, it's one of the things that really excited me actually about the deck as I went through the unboxing. I'm like, this is something different to look at. That's, that's cool. Oh, also, by the way, guys, I did um, learn something interesting after posting the, the Apocalypsis unboxing. Uh, oh, what's her name? K Karen from Avalon Spiritual Odyssey, that YouTube channel, posted a comment letting me know the reason why there is no gold edging on the Terror Apocalypsis. Um, apparently, it was, you know, fully intentional uh, and has to do with... Uh, that right there apparently they were a lot of um decks chipping they got a lot of complaints maybe something like that so they decided i guess to just leave it off honestly i feel like mine has fared pretty well it's only i don't even know if that's showing up good on camera but it's only the corners really where i noticed um this fading or wearing away um now of course that being said i do have a lot of tarot decks to say the least so i'm sure mine is not getting as much use as um a lot of other people's decks who uh maybe we're just focusing on this deck or just use it a lot more um but i use mine fairly fairly often and you know i think it held up okay i don't really mind that, that that's happened um but like i said in the other video it did create this little lip on the card where the edging was so you know while it shuffled fine for me it was i found it a little irritating so there's definitely something cool about not having it um and i understand why they did that uh but thanks for the info karen that was very cool um, but I was really excited to jump right in and do um, a comparison between the Terra Illuminati and the, the new Terra Apocalypsis. Both by Eric C. Dunn uh, and the accompanying books written by the wonderful and amazing Kim Huggins. So here you guys can see all the, the different backs. Like I said, this is the Centennial Edition. Depending on what Rider Waite Smith deck you have, you'll have different backings. Um, but you can see the, the Terra Illuminati and the, the Terra Apocalypsis. I'm going to get so tongue-tied during this video trying to say the names of these two tarot decks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so if you thought the backs of the Tarot Illuminati were ornate, holy balls, <laughs> check out the Tarot Apocalypsis. It is uber ornate. Um, I do think it's interesting. The, the red stuff might be sort of hard to see there. It's like this uh, galaxy um, cloud nebula spacey sort of stuff going on back there. You can see all the stars over here. Um, so while I think, yeah, nothing's ever jumped out at me to make the Terra Illuminati um, non-reversible. There, there actually is some things, but it really, really doesn't jump out at you. Um, some of the differences in the top to the bottom and the, um, the flower in the center of the ornate window or whatever there. Or the Vesca Pisces. Um, while on this one, yeah, it really is much more noticeable when it is uh, reversed uh, versus upright. Just because of the darkness up here and the lightness down there. See that? It's like always dark on top. <laughs> 
Um, but again, it's it's not something that is like gonna make it so you have to like look away when you shuffle if you're someone that really doesn't like to be distracted by holding a reverse card which is really what I do that drives me crazy okay so I'm gonna jump in and flip these cards around so we can see them okay so regardless of how these are all coming across on camera like they said they are all pretty much uh, standard tarot size and like we talked about in the last video, uh, the Terra Apocalypsis comes with an extra card called the All Gifted. That is Pandora. So I'm going to set her aside. Um, and there are all three fools, guys. Look at that. So, oh my god, I didn't even notice this. Um, the fonts and the, the lettering and stuff, there actually is more of a difference than I remembered when I first went through. Um, like I said, it looks to be the same exact font that they used, um, but there are some differences like on the, the background of this little, what do you call that, cutaway I'll call it at the bottom where it has like the black background and the lettering. Um, there's little like swirly do's and it's just, <laughs> swirly do's, and it's just plain black in the, in the Terrible Apocalypsis. Um, I don't think the Terra Illuminati or the other one really needs more swirly dues, so I appreciate the cleanness at the bottom on this one. Um, and it looks like the, the numbers have like a period afterwards, and then the, uh, uh, and then the card titles over here, there's like a little flowery thing in between the two, um, but it looks very pretty. Also, my the in the fool is not capitalized. Oh, none of them are capitalized. And in the Terra Apocalypses, all the thes are capitalized. Um, and also the font on the Terra Illuminati is a uh, yellow color, and it is white in the uh, in the Apocalypses. So while our whirling dervish fool here uh, in the Terra Apocalypses does look really kind of different, you know, there's no dog, there's the sunset, but there's no sun. Um, he still is dancing on a cliff, maybe about to walk off a cliff. Um, I think this is really cool to look at too. This is something I've, I've done on my own compared to these two. Um, they're really, they're so, so similar, the Rider Waite Smith and the, uh, and the Terra Illuminati. He also has, you know, no bag. He has no flower in his hand. Um, but, you know, that kind of stuff never bothers me. I don't mind. I love when decks don't stick to Rider Waite Smith. Rider Waite Smith is not like the tarot deck of which all tarot decks should be based. Not at all, in my opinion. <laughs> um, although I do love, love, love me some Rider Waite Smith. Don't get me wrong, folks. Lord, these cards get all messed up when I try to flip to the next one, so I'm probably going to edit the crap out of this video so it'll go quick and just cut to each card after I get it all set up <laughs> so it'll go quick. All right, guys, here are your three magicians. Uh, now, in Terra Illuminati, of course, the magician is called the Alchemist, and they went back to the magician for the uh, for the Apocalypsis. I actually loved them using the term uh, the Alchemist. I think it sums up the card, um, gets at the meaning of the card really, really quite well. I thought that word worked perfectly, and I loved something different. That was really cool. So while the Alchemist card really does does sort of resemble the, the Rider Waite Smith card, this one looks a little bit more different actually. Um, you do still in the Apocalypses have a representation of earth, air, fire, and water right in that picture there. Um, I think it really it still covers the, the, the meaning of the card quite well. And here are your High Priestess cards. Can we just take a moment and like revel in the beauty that are these two High Priestess cards? Like, <laughs> Oh my god. I know a lot of us, myself included, really are not, they tend to not be huge fans of this sort of computer generated artwork style. Um, like Sierra Marchetti does that a lot, and Marchetti? Marchetti? Whatever. Um, and uh, I personally don't own any of those decks, kind of for that reason. There was something, I mean, they're beautiful too. I hate shitting on any tarot deck because, like, they're all awesome tarot decks, but. Um, it's just not my my favorite and I never thought like a lot of you guys that I would really enjoy um, Like the Tarot Illuminati at first um, But there's something really magical about these cards guys even if you're a little on the fence man Like I was at first when you get into them you will get sucked into the fantasy world that is these decks um, it, it feels like it puts me in touch with the fantasy of tarot itself they really are quite exquisite, and the, the Terra Apocalypse is, is totally doing the same thing for me. Like, I seriously want to enter these cards and, like, just worship at the feet of this, these high priestesses. They are, they're, they're beautiful. 
and really, like we saw in uh, in the in the other cards so far, there's still a lot of um, things to sort of tie in the High Priestess back to you know classic um, classic cards. She still has her two or classic Rider Waite Smith cards, I should say. Um, she still has her two pillars back there. There's a there's a full moon. There's even water running down here by her feet, which I don't think you really have. Yeah, her dress sort of looks like running water down here, but it it kind of isn't. Like, this is clearly running water um, behind her, not from her dress. Um, although the dress does still kind of look like that. The whole thing looks like a waterfall. Um, and you've got your pomegranate back in this one, uh, and your crescent moons, and your full moons, and these High Priestess cards are just so phenomenal. And here are your, your three Empress cards. I didn't even notice that, but this is supposed to be like the Inanna, or the, the cult of Inanna and the Terra Apocalypse is here. She's even still wearing um, a, a crown of stars here. How many are there? Yeah, it looks like I can only count eight um, specific sort of star-looking things on the top of her crown, but she is sort of turned a little bit, um, and it looks like there's more rays coming out of the crown than actually have like a star kind of thing on top of them. So, um, I don't know, maybe they're alluding to the fact that there's 12 on the other side or something. Um, but in uh, the Rider Waite Smith and the Terra Illuminati, they both do have um, the 12 stars in, in the Empress's crown. So here in the Emperor card, you definitely see like a huge difference in, in the Apocalypse's Emperor card. Um, he's not seated on a, on a throne at all. He is standing. He is mighty. Uh, he's still in the mountains like the other two cards, uh, which is kind of a nice tie-in. Uh, and I like that he's got the, uh, was that an eight-spoked wheel there? Yeah. I think that, um, that works really well for the Emperor. Um, and he still has his, uh, his ram back here. It's like the Ares references or the ram references everywhere. And, oh my god, aren't we all just flipping out over the Apocalypsis Hierophant card uh, with all the uh, Tibetan Buddhist uh, imagery and symbolism. It is an absolutely gorgeous card. Um, and it still feels pretty right away Smith. You still have the two disciples, um, or the two opposites, you could say, down at the bottom. Um, and then it's just like the three levels of the Hierophant sort of, or of the, the Dalai Lama here, sort of reflects his... Uh, your your classic Hierophant's cross with the three lines through it that he holds, you know, representing, if you will, the, the three body, mind, and spirit, or three different levels of evolution kind of thing. Yeah, that's such a beautiful card. Oh, these two lovers cards actually seem to have sort of a, a similar coloring, don't they? Again, you can see how classic Rider Waite Smith the the Terra Illuminati is with the angel above the two. And I just, I love the inclusion of the sun and the moon on the lover's card. I think that's so good. Um, they do this really interesting thing, Eric C. Dunn, I guess, in, in his decks, um, where this, the drapery of the clothes they wear and um, the material used, I don't know, it just, it flows throughout the card so beautifully. Like, look at that, it's like wrapped around them both, and it's just floating in the wind, and he's done the same thing on this lover's card. Um, it's like the... It's hard to tell, but it looks like the robes of the angel just wrap around the, the lovers and wrap around their respective trees. It's a, it's a really interesting thing he's done with that throughout the whole deck. So yeah, as we go through through the majors, I am really seeing the Rider Waite Smith connections in the in the major arcana. I feel like maybe it differs a little bit more in the minors, um, but it's cool. He threw a, a little angel crowning the the victor here on the uh, on the chariot. I enjoy that. Uh, and you still have, you know, it's very classic to see horses instead of sphinxes depicted. That was already changed in Illuminati. And you've got a dark horse and a light horse on the uh, Terra Apocalypsis also. Even here in all three, you can tell that they're riding through, like, a town of some sort. There's buildings and society sort of all around them. All right, and strength is number eight in all decks, just like it is in your, your Rider Waite Smith deck. Uh, and I love on this one, it's not just a, a classic lion. You have a tiger. Very cool. Um, I do think you've sort of lost the infinity symbol, the classic Lazy 8 Lemniscate up there. But yeah, they went in a really different direction with the strength card. Uh, and yet you can still see the same sort of thing happening between um, the woman and, and the big cat, if you will. You know, she's in control of it. They're working together, you know, they're... There's a, a relationship there.
I was super intrigued by this, like, Inuit shamanic hermit when I first saw it. It is so beautiful. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I haven't, I still haven't read the whole book. It looks like a, a female hermit, too, which is really, really wonderful. Um, but I got to say, I'm still sort of obsessed with that Illuminati hermit. Oh, he was, that one and kind of the high priestess were the two that I was like, I kind of want this deck. They're really cool looking. Um, but I love this with the northern lights behind her. And that more shamanic angle is just, oh, it's so good. Um, but she doesn't, she isn't holding a lamp, but I feel like the drum here is, is her guide, you know, as, as well it should be. I think it works on a, on a very similar metaphoric level. So here is your three wheel cards, and of course the Terra Illuminati really, really mimics the, the Rider Waite Smith. It has all the same symbols, exactly, as the Rider Waite Smith does on the wheel there. Uh, and, and the Terrapocalypsis uh, comes at it a little bit differently. Uh, in the center you see reflected like images that represent the four seasons, and of course Demeter from Greek mythology is holding them all in her, in her beautiful wheel. It's sort of weird. Have you guys noticed this too if you have um, either of these decks, how the more you play around with them and get used to them, they do start to seem less busy than they did at first. Uh, this was a really nice surprise in the Terra Apocalypse is to see the goddess, the Egyptian goddess Ma'at, because that is always how I've looked at the Justice card. Um, very, very strong associations with what that goddess does and represents. So a literal depiction of her on the Justice card is just phenomenal. And I even love that she's sort of over a sarcophagus. Um, but it still, it screams justice, her scales and, and what she's doing and the position of strength and just everything. You know what else I noticed actually? There are some Justice cards in old Marseille decks. I just saw it in the, that Camellia Elias book that I just reviewed on the Justice card in the Carolus Zoya Marseille deck that she uses to illustrate her book. There is an angelic uh, Justice. She actually has has wings. That was neat. Here are your three hanged mans. And while I think I do personally prefer to see a, an upside down hangman, I think that hanged man, I think that is an important aspect to the card. Um, it really, it's not going to take me too far out of it to not have him upside down. He still, you know, still gets at all the connotations of sacrifice and, um, I don't know, I feel like there may be even some sort of inner reversal going on when you're just suspended like that, you know? Let me zoom in on this card again. It's something I didn't really notice at first, but it's it's really interesting. Can you I see that right there? He's actually like you ever see those those people who who hang suspended and dance up on the strings or whatever that stuff is called, and they're like bleeding because they're literally like hooks through their skin. Um, while he doesn't have hooks, it looks like rope through his skin. Uh, there is sort of blood dripping down and it is a bit a bit violent. Um, they talk about in the book, like I said, I haven't <laughs> read the whole thing, um, but they make reference to this, like the dark night of the soul and this um, idea of, of anguish and suffering, spiritual suffering, uh, which I definitely think is appropriate with, with the hanged man. So that's, that's sort of cool. He's, uh, the, whole, the whole image on the card is supposed to be making reference to like uh, the Native Americans of the plains, like their sun dance or, or something like that. And on to our death card. So actually, really, it's one of the busier cards in uh, the Rider Waite Smith, I think, also. Uh, but both these cards, really, they just have a lot of color, a lot of different things going on. Um, of course, in the Illuminati, he's still on horseback in all three of them there. They're still skeletal, though, uh, and, and carrying, are they all carrying a flag? No, he's just carrying the scythe in, in the Apocalypsis. Um, and he's only sort of marched over the one person. There's no other people there, but it's still just so, so similar to the Rider Waite Smith, the Illuminati. Um, and then this is supposed to be like the Mexican Santa Muerte. And here are your beautiful temperance cards. Love that they didn't go with an angel in the, in the apocalypse, with just like a literal alchemist, which is definitely what the other two cards are talking about, this, this blending and union of opposites. And there's always been a lot of debate, actually, if the, the Rider Waite Smith is supposed to be a man or a woman or some form of, of androgyny or hermaphrodite. 
um, because it is it's very it's very androgynous looking this angel and uh, a lot of people say that they see that in the Terra Illuminati too right with the face look and the head shape and everything looking much more feminine uh, but with the clear clear body of a man there not sure if that was intentional or not but I do like to see that too when I look at it I think that's a cool way to go so it's not like you can't, at least in the Major Arcana right now, tell what cards you are looking at. They're not that different in the Tarot Apocalypsis. Um, but they certainly don't look exactly the same either. Okay, so I had to jump into the book right after I finished the last video and f really un to understand what was going on in this Devil card. Um, I, all I read was the title in the last video, and I think it was called The Imagined Cult of the Witch's Sabbath. Now, don't take offense <laughs> when you get this, or if you have it and you read in the book, it's all explained um, beautifully as as a, a really cool metaphor for for this devil card. Um, so what it is is like this like creepy looking devil guy looking like Pan or something, um, or a classic devil really, um, with all these women naked dancing about, lustful, raising sexual energy. Um, and it does have these tie-ins with, you know, like ancient witch hunts and, and all that. Um, it's sort of what the people would imagine. I mean, who knows, maybe some of this stuff took place. I'm sure it did. Um, Sabbaths can be very sexual. Uh, but like the these fears that that they let overtake them, what they thought was going on with with these witches when they celebrated and worshipped the devil, and why they probably had to hang and burn some of them at the stake. Uh, which, if you think about it, really, like, right? Isn't that that good for the devil? It's all about this, these like unhealthy fears and. Um, you know, desires and and addiction to to material things or, or unhealthy things. Um, so it really it really works quite well. I'm actually really fascinated by this card. And there are only it looks to be only women down there, all sort of dancing around this fire and this devilly guy kind of in the nude. Such an, an interesting take on that card, guys. It really, really is, and it's really a pretty looking card too. Um, and then, of course, in the Illuminati, again, just very, very similar to the Rider Waite Smith with your muzzle bound devil <laughs> and um, the male and female tied or chained to the devil at the bottom. Um, it actually even looks like he's doing one of those like marionette things almost in the apocalypse this year um, with his, his beads or chains of light or I'm not sure what they are actually. So it's almost it's almost even like they're actually like raising him from the fire. Maybe they're the ones creating the devil, and then he has control back over them somehow. Yeah, there's a lot of really interesting things to look at in that card, guys. Very cool. And then here are your three tower cards, all of which are burning towers, all of which have been struck by lightning. Um, I actually always thought it was cool that in Illuminati they even put the tower up on like a mountaintop, just like it is in the Rider Waite Smith. Um, but all have stormy skies behind them, and while in the apocalypse there are no people falling from the tower or anything, you you do have this pile of skeletal remains being munched on by a happy little vulture there. <laughs> Um, and one of the things I always like to, to see when I look at a tower card is, I've said it before, like it looks like it just blew your head off like the top of the tower just exploded off and your head opens wide up. One of the things I really like is that this ascetic down here is holding up like the top of a head. So good. <laughs> here are your beautiful, peaceful, wonderful star cards. Um, they all kind of have a similar coloring even, don't they? A little bit. Maybe not. Of course, the, the Virgin Mother Mary here in the star card. I love that. Um, and while she's not naked, I feel like it still it still gets at this same sort of idea, this bearing it all and openness. You know, you still, you still can make that inference here um, just because of what the, the Virgin Mother Mary even represents. Um, but she's not pouring any, any jugs out. She's not messing around with water here at all. Um, but I think, again, the substitute of these sort of characters and um, personalities, gods, archetypes that they've done with the apocalypse is just another cool way to come at the meaning of, of the cards. And I think they've done um, a really great job with that. 
And here are your moon cards. You get a big moon in everyone. Um, I do love how Illuminati maintained that idea of like an eclipse happening um, with, the, with the moon in front of the solar rays. You have lost that over here with um, the moon and the goddess Hecate represented. But how cool is it to have a Hecate on your card? Like, that's freaking awesome. Um, and then she still has these, these two Dobermans, is that what they are? Those two dogs right there. You don't have a crayfish crawling out of every of anything, but um, yeah, it still it still feels sort of similar. I don't actually, I guess I don't really love that there's not a path leading through. That's always been a very important part uh, of the card for me. You don't have the two towers, but you do still have these sort of two what are they, mountains or elevated land here um, that you would travel between. There is this interesting, like, procession of people, though, um, heading down a path. So, yeah, you still, you really do still have that, I guess. And here are your sun cards. Baby, baby, man. That's for Kelly at The Truth and Story. <laughs> Love you, babe. But yeah, in this card, you really have lost a lot of the classic symbolism. Um, it looks like he's bursting out of an egg, which I kind of like here. Uh, and he still looks to be this solar force, you know, that solar logos or, or whatever. Um, but you don't have the wall. You don't have um, a lot of the stuff that you even find on all the classic Marseille decks. I really do often like on, on sun cards and a lot of other decks, they do sort of get at the same thing of all the signs of the zodiac. Uh, around the sun, which, you know, has to do with the movements of the planet, of the sun. I think that's that's really, um, really very good and, and interesting. You even do, actually, look at that. I didn't notice you get the red sash <laughs> in all three. This is uh, Mithras. And here are your gorgeous judgment cards. I kind of feel a little bad doing this video before I actually got a chance to really read the Tarot Apocalypse's book. Ah, sorry, I just couldn't wait to compare them. Um, but anyway, I love that they did this this great flood. It's something that you see in almost every culture and almost every mythology, some reference to an event like this. And I think it's a beautiful way to represent this, this cleansing and this rebirth, um, which is obviously a, a huge part of the judgment card, this resurrection, um, and then this return, you know? Uh, so while that judgment card does look very different, um, it's oh, it's good. Uh, you can even see sort of here. Let me zoom in on the the Rider Waite Smith here for a second. Um, it's all sort of blue back there, and then you see this this land with trees. It it could even be that this is like water with the the coffins that they're rising up of, or on the land, or there's water in between, or something. Uh, it's, I don't know, I always found that kind of cool. It doesn't look like they really went there uh, in the Illuminati, like putting water behind there, but it is sort of obscure looking behind them. And it's definitely something you don't see on Marseille decks with lots of other people back there. It's usually just um, the three, you know, the, the man and the woman and the, the child or the... Um, or this this androgynous, young-looking form re reanimated, um, given new life, a new being. A new being created. And here's your world card. Oh my god, you guys, this is uber, uber good. It's like my favorite world card out of all of these. Um, this is probably going to be like a favorite world card of all time. Friggin' love it. Yeah, I'm obsessed. This is like Sophia uh, and her, <laughs> her descent into the world, into matter, and her her redemption uh, at the end. Like this is actually supposed to be um, Atlas. I didn't realize that holding up, holding up the world. I get lost in that card. It's gorgeous, um, and I like how you have the gold sort of ring around everything, tying in this circle. Uh, and you still even have reference to the four um, signs of the zodiac with the constellations in all four corners of this card here. Um, amazing. Here they are animals and everything looks very similar to how it does in the Rider Waite Smith. Uh, and here, you know, this, this anima mundi idea is expressed um, again, but you still have her nude this time, but with the same sort of flowy, scarfy thing um, draped around her that they do so amazing in this deck, or Eric C. Dunn does so amazingly. I, I would hang pictures of him drawing flowing garments all over my house. Like, <laughs> they're beautiful. 
Okay, so as we go through the minors, I am going to try and go a little bit quicker here. So here's one thing that you've lost in the Apocalypse. You don't have, um, in all the aces on the Illuminati, just like in the Rider Waite Smith, you have a hand holding up like a symbol of the suit. Here you just don't have the hand, but in all four cases in this deck, I believe in the Apocalypse, they are still just a representation, more or less, of the suit sign. Like that's the, the focus of the card. Even though there's a lot more detail around it, it's still just like a floating wand here, you know? All right, here's your two of wands. Uh, while, the, again, this card looks very, very different, these two are obviously super, super similar. Um, although they've added the, the ships in, like you or normally see in the in three of wands. Um, you'll see them again there. Um, but yeah, I like I like what they've done here. It expresses, I think, a similar idea as the Rider Waite Smith as the rest of the Rider Waite Smith decks. Um, and I like that they've included this time of day thing for the first few cards in the wands here. It's it's sunrise, it's morning, it's the two. We're just starting, get to work, you know? I like that. Uh, here in three of wands, <clears throat> like we said before, the sun is moving across the sky. So here it's more afternoon, you know, the sun is higher in the sky. Um, and you can like see everything. It's it's the three. You can see your ships. You can see, you know. Um, I even it does sort of follow that right away. Smith also because you're you're coming at this this guy here in the three of wands from behind, just like you are in the uh, in the other two cards. He's even got the the staffs. Um, more closely positioned to how they are in in the original right away. Smith and the Pamela Coleman Smith. Yeah, here in the Illuminati, he's just holding them a little bit differently. That's cool. And then, of course, instead of the ships here, you have um, camels coming and camels returning with, with things on their back, carrying things. And then here at this sort of pseudo-completion that you find in the Four of Wands, it's it's sunset here in the in Terror Apocalypse's land. Um, also, by the way, in the in the Wands in the Terror in the Terror Illuminati, uh, they are all set. As you can see here, it's Egyptian. As you can see in Terror Illuminati, it is like this this Persian sort of a of a feel. It's this Persian culture represented and all brought to life. In both decks, the Illuminati and Apocalypse, they have a very distinct feel, each and every suit, um, like it's from a different culture. Here's your Five of Wands. Oh, I really actually like how they're all kind of working together to defeat the, the challenge that really necessarily isn't each other. Um, I know that they say a lot with this card, right, with the with the Rider Waite Smith, that it's it's more like practice, like they're not really trying to kill each other, is, is what's being illustrated here. Um, I like in, in one deck, I forget the name of it, I don't have it, but it's more, it's a basketball game, you know, they're playing, they're learning, they're, they're working together almost, uh, and you actually see that a little bit more here in this card. Um, the same thing could be inferred from the Illuminati, um, but it's easy to misinterpret, if you could call it that, because they are actually fighting each other, um, but to misinterpret it, right away, Smith-wise, as like something a little bit more dire, a little bit more violent or, or serious, just, you know in terms of what's going on on the card. And here is your Six of Wands. You still actually in the Apocalypse have the same thing really taking place. He's being um, just carried instead of riding on horseback through the town as I guess you would sort of see like a pharaoh or something being carried around. Uh, and then, yeah, dude, this really is still very, very right away Smith. Um, it's the same sort of idea. He's got the, the higher ground and the, the people holding the other wands are, are a little bit lower. And I think you can clearly see here in the eight how uh, how similar they are, although you do have a, a person depicted with a lion and a falcon up there. So, so gorgeous. I love the way they did the wands in the Illuminati, that Persian style ornate wand. I think that's gorgeous. And here's your nine of wands cards. Uh, in the Egyptian one, they went with this representation of, of Cleopatra defending against like the, the Romans. Uh, it's a it's a good analogy, I think. I, I like that. And then here in the Ten of Wands, uh, you see uh, they're all actually really very classic. Um, even though in the Egyptian here, the the pyramid builder slave dude is not um, carrying the wands. He's carrying like the the top of the pyramid, the capstone, um, I think you call it. And uh, yeah, I think that works. It's it's heavy, it's hard to, to keep seeing these things through, you know? That's good. 
And here's our first court cards. Um, love, 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 how an Illuminati and Apocalypsis, um, all the pages are female. Um, they are called princesses, princes, uh, queens, and kings, which can be a little confusing, confusing if you uh, jump around between uh, like a Thoth system and a Rider Waite Smith um, because they don't translate to pretty much the same things, um, in, my, in my opinion. Uh, but it's it's I like that they did it that way. I think I think it works very very well um, But either way you still have a young person uh, with their wand now This is cool here actually in the in the princes of wands Of course you have your your knight on horseback almost always and here you really he's just not on horseback He's he's standing he's still strong and searching maybe but uh, Yeah, very very different so be aware of that. And here are your queens, which actually I think in all three are actually really just quite, quite similar. Even with the Persian feel versus the Egyptian feel, they all still have their black cats. Um, they all still have the flowers, even though they're different flowers like in the Egyptian world here. Would they have cats like that in Egypt? I always picture... Um, those more, I don't know, bald cats, I don't know what they're called, the Siamese looking cats or something, uh, wandering around Egypt more than this fuzzy little black cat. <laughs> And again here, um, where you classically see a king throned, of course, in the Rider Waite Smith, you get in there. Um, you have uh, you have him you have a, a figure standing. By the way, this is supposed to be Horus, um, and then you also had Set, Isis, and Hathor. Hathor was your queen here. Hathor. So yeah, they are all specific goddesses from uh, from from the Egyptian pantheon. And on to our next suit, the suit of cups. Um, in Illuminati, the cups are supposed to represent this fantasy world like nowhere necessarily specific um it looks almost shakespearean a little bit in some cases um but it's a holy sort of fantasy world that they created for that suit um and then in the cups here we have a a very greek take on things which is really quite cool and here's your two of cups all having the the caduceus winding their way up in every single card love 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 that um yeah, every card though, it is uh, a man and a woman coming together. Uh, Three of Cups, again, very, very similar to each other. And here are your three of Four of Cups cards. Over here in, um, in the Apocalypsis though, it's kind of, it's really cool what's happening. First of all, she's got this classic Mediterranean look about it that I just love, including the villa looking scene behind her. Um, but she's actually like casting a spell or cursing something or someone perhaps. Um, it's, she's got these these nails or needles in her hand that she's using to do that with this, this object down here, this tablet thing. I think it's a really cool looking scene. And it still works very well with uh, the nature of the Four of Cups, I think. And then your Five of Cups, very, very similar. You still have the spilt, um, spilt cups, three spilt cups versus two standing cups in all three cards. Uh, I like how the woman is, you see her face though. She's like weeping and reaching out. I think that's, that's a cool take. Uh, and as a lot of people do, they've gone with the more childlike interpretation of the two figures on the Rider Waite Smith card. You have a young boy and girl playing in the garden here, um, and then a family, you know, with young kids sort of going back and forth over here too. And here in the world of fantasy and dreams and imagination and the Seven of Cups, right, um, you <clears throat> have a very, very very different scene taking place here in the Seven of Cups. Um, it's like this this bathhouse of Pompeii kind of thing. Um, and it's very erotic, fantasy type of a, of a scene taking place. It's all men in the bathhouse here with these just erotic images everywhere. They went in a very sexual direction. Um, but I think it's, you know, I mean, the whole, both of these decks are very, have a very sexual nature about them. So this was a, a really, really interesting one. I, I certainly think that um, all our gay male tarot readers out there um, might really, really appreciate the idea and concept behind this card. It's, it's really cool. And here are your dark, moonlit Eight of Cups. But um, they are all here on, you know, a bit of a journey. Yeah.
And here's your Nine of Cups, all very joyful and, and wealthy and abundant. Um, again, I love the, the swap of the sexes here. You have um, a woman enjoying literally fruit, um, even being served here by another woman. Uh, and the goddess, that's like Fortuna with her, her cornucopia, uh, holding her cornucopia there. And again, although the apocalypsis here in the Ten of Cups looks kind of different without the rainbow of cups, um, arching over the card in any way. Um, you still even have an arch of the card at the top and, and all the cups laid out. Um, and it's still, in all three cases, a, a scene of, of a happy family. And here are your three um, pages or, or princesses uh, of cups in their, in their watery places. Uh, this is actually supposed to be, um, what's her name? Psyche. And then, of course, the next card is Eros, or Cupid, her, her partner there. And there's your other knight and your prince. This is another one of my favorite cards in the Tarot Illuminati. Actually, that Prince of Cups is just, like, mind-blowingly good. Um, he's got an amazing way of drawing wings, doesn't he? <laughs> They're so, so beautiful. And then, again, a non-throned Queen of Cups in the Apocalypsis. Uh, she is supposed to be a representation of Aphrodite, uh, which works, right? And then there's your three uh, Kings of Cups uh, in Apocalypsis. It's supposed to be like Apollo there, actually. Even though he is holding a Lear, I was like, is that Orpheus? No, it's supposed to be Apollo. <laughs> All right, and there are our three um, Ace of Swords, all actually looking super similar side by side, right? There's just a ton more extra detail um, of all this Norse cosmology stuff with Yggdrasil, the world tree, and all these different beings and runes around it in the Terror Apocalypsis. Um, and then in the Two of Swords, you still see like these cross swords in 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 these two decks. Um, and I just love the addition of the the Viking contemplating his next move in the chess game, um, looking at things from both sides and that inner fight or turmoil within. You know that that just works so well. And then in the Apocalypse's Three of Swords, you definitely don't have um, a heart being stabbed, which, you know what, I'm kind of over. It's so cliche at this point anyway. <laughs> um, but there is sort of blood running down the swords here and dripping onto these beautiful uh, white roses with this very northern background. Um, by the way, we switched suits, so now in the Illuminati, we are in, oh, what's the swords? Like this um, very Elizabethan um, England, English sort of a, of a setting. Uh, and then of course in the Swords and the Apocalypsis, we're in the, the world of the Norse. And there's your fours of swords, all looking rather similar. You still have your your church um, stained glass looking kind of stuff in, in both of these two. Um, you've lost that. You're outside now here in, I guess, really what would have been more of a sacred kind of a setting um, to a Norse woman like that, right? Outside, under the trees, under the stars, out in nature with her little, uh, uh, an altar to, to Freya, right? Right there next to her, next to the fire. Um, but they are all more or less still meditating, relaxing, something like that. All right, and here are your five of swords. Um, I, I think like a lot of us, was a little bit like, oh boy, here's those rough and rowdy Vikings. They're so stereotypical. Um, but I did go back and read in the book about this card specifically, and I thought it was really interesting um, and very true. There's this whole tradition in the in the north of... Um, sort of boasting about your deeds and being verbose about what you've done and this this uh, this idea of, of flighting um, pr provoking someone else even uh, which which yeah it's it's a thing so it's cool to see it in this in the suit um, with the Vikings in the hall doing it but I think it also is a beautiful tie back to the verbal mental nature of the swords and especially the five of swords so instead of having them them fighting as it, they they're not actually fighting here but it looks like right someone's just won a sword battle um here their swords are laid on the table so someone's maybe winning a battle of wits um more than anything else so really very very cool um so much thought went into what they chose to put on these cards. Uh, and then here in the Six of Swords, we talked about this card quite a bit um, in the other video, but they are all on boats with, with the swords sailing away and 
Yeah. Good. All similar. Uh, and then in your sevens, your seven of swords here, you actually, the only difference really is that there is a depiction of another person, like maybe who he's stealing those swords from. <laughs> the um, swordsmith or metal worker, you know, whatever you want to call him. And then your eights here actually all really do look quite similar, don't they? Some of the minor details, like he's no blindfold here, but, and it's a man, again, we always have, though they do this a lot with that, that swap of the sexes, which I really like, keeps you on your toes. Uh, but yeah, still everyone's bound and um, tie or surrounded by swords, sort of. Um, this one in the, in the apocalypse is on a, a kneading pole, which is like a, a cursing, sort of a, a way to do a curse with a pole, basically. <laughs> And then here in the Nine of Swords, you see your your sleepless woman, and over here she's being sort of haunted or, or tormented. Um, there's a, a Deseer spirit down here, you know, this, um, oh, like, feminine ancestral spirits, sort of. Um, and then this idea of, like, a Draugr or a Drauga. Um, feminine spirit sort of haunting her too. They're these zombie-like creatures uh, in uh, northern folk tradition. Uh, and then your ten of swords here. Everyone is stabbed to death. Um, I talked about this one in the other video. Uh, again, very similar. You just have more to the story and in this case I think it's it's cool. It really, it really does work. I don't think if you're very familiar with Norse mythology like I was worried about um, being with these cards that it would take you out of tarot zone, you know, I'm, I'm just, I don't think I'm gonna have that problem with this deck And then in the princesses here and the pages, they're all standing with their sword That was Saga by the way in the princess card. This is Loki over here in tarot apocalypsis um, now, of course, they're um, on horseback in all the Illuminati cards, the princes or the knights. Um, but he, in this deck, Loki is um, riding on something, actually, which is cool. He's riding on a, on a falcon. So you get a little bit more of that knight feeling, I think, that classic knight feeling with that prince. And then here's your three queens. This is supposed to be the Vala or the Volva, um, a Cirrus. Um, and she actually is beautifully throned there, pretty much. And then all three kings really are rather throned looking here. <laughs> you got Gary and Frecky. I'll stop giggling about my Norse stuff. I just love it. Um, and the Elizabethan uh, king in the Illuminati. Very cool looking. Uh, both of their arms are sort of crossed here in the, the two kings. They're a little little grumpy feeling. I guess you sort of get that feeling, though, from the king and the Rider Waite Smith, too. He's got this very stern sort of grump on his grump on his face. All right, guys, and our last suits. Here we go into the pentacles. That's your aces. And then all three of these two of pentacles are so super similar. Look at that. I didn't even... I didn't really expect them to look like that. They all have the, the rough and tumble water behind them. Of course, these two are much more similar with the ships upon the waves. Um, but all three of them, even this woman over here, they're, they're juggling and they still have that um, figure eight um, lemniscate between and intertwining around the two pentacles. That's really neat. Yeah, upon my first viewing, I really did not realize just how uber Rider Waite Smith the Terror Apocalypse really still is. It takes some fun little twists and turns, but for the most part, it is staying pretty gosh darn right away, Smith. Um, and use your three of pentacles. I like how they left the, the three pentacles very, very similarly formed and, and shaped uh, in these two. Uh, but in all three, there's the three pentacles sort of at the top. A nice reminder um, for those who work within the Rider Waite Smith system of what card you are actually looking at there. Oh, we have, by the way, changed suits here again, obviously. So now we are in like this uh, Hindu, Indian, Buddhist, Eastern sort of a world here in the Tarot Apocalypsis. Um, and in the Tarot Illuminati, we're in a very Oriental setting culture. Um, by the way, uh, I, they did split up the Terra Apocalypses in such an interesting way. Um, all of the, the court cards are basically uh, 
goddesses associated with that respective culture that they're exploring in the suit. Um, all of the, the pip cards, um, the ones through the tens, or more I guess the twos through the tens, are depictions of like daily life and their interaction with their spirituality or their divine. Uh, and then they, they separated out the major arcana by exploring like these ancient mystery traditions, these mystery schools. The, these different, um, like, mystery practices kind of thing. Uh, so that's actually how, how the, the deck is laid out. Here are your fours, your four of pentacles. And I guess although, you know, in these two they're obviously doing the exact same thing, he really is sort of doing the same thing here. It just looks a little bit different, a little bit more of an artistic take. It's almost like he just allowed himself to, to take these classic Rider Waite Smith um, ideas and images and just, just push them a little further, just take them and run a little bit. Um, he stayed on a fairly short leash, though, so it's still a great deck for anyone who is, you know, like holy Rider Waite Smith, you know? Um, here are your five pentacles. Here in this um, much warmer climate, of course, you don't have this out in the, the snow, out in the cold kind of a feeling, but it is it is raining kind of just on the older couple over here. Um, but the sun is shining and things are clearing up in the background there, which is an interesting touch. I actually really like that five of pentacles from, uh, from Terra Illuminati. That's another one of my favorites. And here are your six pentacles. So here, of, of course, again, in Terra Lumina and Rider Waite Smith, they look very, very similar. You can see the same exact things happening. These sort of beggars, you could call them, and, and the man bestowing gifts upon them. Um, and then over here in the Six of Pentacles in the Terra Apocalypsis, um, it's hard to sort of see what's happening there at first glance. But what it really is is a Buddhist monk. Um, and then there's these these bowls all around him, right? These are like his alms bowls. So he's he's still a beggar of sorts. Um, and there's a giving and a receiving taking place there. So it really is um, along the same lines. And here in all the sevens over here, Eric C. Dunn has stuck to a very mm, growing, harvesting, planting kind of idea, just like you see um, in the classic Rider Waite Smith. Uh, and then here in the Eight of Pentacles, uh, again, it can sort of be a little misleading what's happening here in the Eight. This one, again, looks really quite different. Um, you can see the same kind of thing happening um, in the Illuminati and the Rider Waite Smith. Uh, but what's happening over here uh, actually is this young monk is going through this rite of passage, a samskara. He's um, an initiation almost. He's he's learning his his path from his teacher, um, which requires practice and work. And you know you can see how that all the same idea sort of ties into to the rest. And then here in your nines, you have your happy, wealthy woman in a garden with a bird in all three. <laughs> She's just in a very different pose here, with which actually is not with what I called a cheetah before, is it? What's that called? Um, like a jet? A jaguar? Is that right? I have no idea what this goddamn cat is called. <laughs> uh, and then there's your ten of pentacles. Yeah, I feel like in a lot of cases, it really, the, the apocalypse is a little bit less busy than a lot of the other Illuminati cards. Um, all very, very similar. Um, the pentacles in the other two cards don't ever um, form the, the shape of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life like they do in the Rider Waite Smith. <clears throat> but you do still see the ten pentacles here. Um, and then, of course, in the Apocalypsis, we have this. Um, was that supposed to be like a, a Cambodian family and these these waterways cooling off and, and socializing and all the different generations are there just like you have in, in all the other cards. Uh, and then here with your page and princesses all holding their, well she's holding a pregnant belly, <laughs> these two are holding their pentacles. Um, it's supposed to be like Perth. V, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, um, like this, uh, oh, what is she, like a Hindu goddess of the earth. Um, but they're all really, they're all kind of lush images, very pretty. Uh, and then here in your, with your princes and your knight, um, again, you actually do have a knight that is riding on something here. He's on um, his, his peacock mounts, and this is a uh, Kartikeya. In both of these, they actually are riding or stopped in front of like a, these, these plowed like fields. You don't really get that. At least I don't see that here anyway in, uh, in the Apocalypsis. And then here, your very beautiful Queens of Pentacles. This is supposed to be Lakshmi, by the way, in Apocalypsis. And our last Kings. 
There they are. Say hello and goodbye, guys. And this is supposed to be Vishnu, a representation of Vishnu. I really like that King of Pentacles, actually, too. I like all the Kings of Pentacles in all three decks. They're very... They all look so different, actually, right now, don't they? Anyway, I really do appreciate what um, what Eric C. Dunn has done with his artwork here, giving fun little twists to a, to a classic, to a favorite, right? All right, guys, I am going to stop there. That was really fun. Thanks for taking this little journey with me, and I will see you guys real soon. Bye.